Welcome to The Better Life with Dr. Mary Ann Pinkston. Join Dr. Pinkston today as she teaches you how an integrative approach to health, combining holistic and contemporary medical information, can lead you to The Better Life. And now here's your host, Dr. Mary Ann Pinkston. Today we have an interesting show to discuss with you on breast cancer prevention. So October is Breast Cancer Prevention Month. And we think that breast cancer prevention is not quite good enough. I think we need to go a little further than that. What do you think, Ray? Well, you know, that touches a nerve all the time. They use the word they call the p i call it the p word prevention right but they say nothing about prevention right. all it is is screenings and treatments right and so i think we just need to frame that before we start talking today this show today i'd like to talk about prevention yes and you and i both know it's it's a, it's work and there's really no profit in prevention <laughs> True. but it's the only thing it does is saves lives that you know just a little thing like that right Yes, I think we are really more about, in contemporary medicine, more about screening and finding sooner, not prevention. Right. So right. if we are talking prevention, how does somebody prevent breast cancer? Well, I think the, the, the important thing is to understand the risk factors right. that, st- that make cancer cells proliferate. Mm-hmm. And I think people, somehow they wake up one day and they think they're having cancer, whatever that is. That started about, what, 10 years beforehand? Exactly. Uh, five years and they think they can get rid of it uh, very simply. And sometimes in chemotherapy or surgery, it's just going to be cancer free. You know, this is all misunderstanding only because of just a lack of education. So I think it just to break it down very simply, some of the biggest risk factors for growing cancer cells in breast tissue or prostate tissue, colon, is that when you have this inflammation going on in our, in our bodies, and this is, this is simply very easy to measure, to when, when you say inflammation, we look at it as for obesity, Right. blood sugar levels, uh, intake of sh- high sugar diets, of these certain markers on your blood test that you can see that inflammation is taking over. Yes. And these are warning bells. And I look at, p- tell people that it's like going down the highway and if you're looking at your gauges and your, your oil lights mm-hmm. on or your gas gauge is low or your speed is too high for what it's supposed to, whatever you, whatever you uh, things that you can assimilate to inflammation, it has to stop. Right. Because this is what the, some of the most basic things that unfortunately pink ribbons and pink shoes and all the balloons that we have are not going to fix it. It's just Absolutely. some common sense medicine. Absolutely. I mean, I'm sorry. It just, I was, I was at the airport the other day and it had this huge, uh, I, I guess, uh, balloon wreath that was out there over a gate at the airport. Mm-hmm. And I went up to him and started looking around and say, well, it, well gosh, there's probably somebody's educating somebody about risk factors. Right. It was nothing. All it was was uh, treatments for chemotherapy treatments and a bunch of pink ribbons. And it wasn't one syllable of some of the risk factors. And you know what? And guess what they had there? And this is the part that really gets me crazy. They had pink Jelly beans. Oh. Okay. <laughs> they had a whole bowl of pink jelly beans. Oh okay. My. So let me get this straight. Yeah. You're going to make cancer worse by eating more jelly beans. Right. And putting a pink ribbon on. And it just, I, I just, I can't contain myself. I, I see you're very passionate about this and I am too. I tell you, it's heartbreaking, right? A bowl of right. sugar to feed your cancer cells that right. have started in you eight to 10 years before you even can detect it and know it's there. And that's for any cancer. And so, yeah, I know we are, you know, in a, a world now with a large amount of pharmaceuticals and, you know, watch TV and, and you've said it before about the consumerism of healthcare these days, how the pharmaceutical industry 
industry is, you know, marketing to us now a ton of anti-cancer drugs that, you know, the, the list as long as my leg as far as things that it can do to you. And really, you know, chemo and things like that is a race to see which dies first, you or the cancer. And it right. is a, not a, a nice way to live. There's so much more we could do by starting in our 20s and our 30s in order to really contain this and, and prevent. That's true for any disease, including obesity, which is a risk factor. So, yeah, it, well, this is something that's uh, largely out of control in our society. Makes a lot of money, though, doesn't it? It does. But well, let's break it down to be a very simple blood test that your office mm -hmm. and your, uh, that can work with patients that I think are some of the biggest risk factors. Right. Is if they able to get their hormone levels, mm -hmm. their estrogen levels broken down into the dangerous estrogens, right? Not just estrogens total, right. but high levels of estrone, right? Okay. That's E1, which is a dangerous. Uh, so the way you metabolize estrogens, you could tell in a blood test, yes. is a risk factor. Yes. Okay. That's one. Number two would be your vitamin D levels, mm -hmm. right? The studies have shown that over 60% increase of uh, breast cancer is for many women that have vitamin D levels less than 20. Which is many, many, many women many. out there. Okay, so it's a, it's a simple blood test. Yes. And then there's also, uh, there are also inflammatory markers. Mm -hmm. uh, there, we can look at your hemoglobin A1C, which right. is a blood sugar marker. Uh, uh, CSP, pro CSP protein is another simple, these are simple blood tests. Absolutely. If these inflammatory markers are off the chart, I think, and then all uh, is is important, and also, I think, uh, for especially for women, that if they are overweight, it is a risk factor, mm -hmm. and especially if they are carrying abdominal weight. Right. And so, I don't think this is very. Uh, these are very inexpensive and simple ways to start, don't Absolute, you think? Absolutely, things I do every day. And I actually use C-reactive protein and insulin levels. A lot of times people can have normal hemoglobin A1C levels, but their fasting uh, in or two hour after they eat insulin levels can be elevated and starting to climb. And that is, I think, one of the earliest warning signs. So there are so many different labs and a lot of which I'm very shocked and surprised most doctors don't use. This is a complete panel. The very first thing that happens when you come to my office, and I know when they go through metabolic code for uh, for uh, your office, and then this is something that is very, very easy to do. Every doctor should do them. And I'm astounded how many doctor's offices really don't. And it starts I, I with, it, it, I guess, excuse me, I'm so sorry. It, in my mind, it's which came first, the chicken or the egg, honestly, because these risk factors start going up, weight starts going up, and then, you know, the cancer comes in and, and that starts growing and one feeds the other. And it just becomes a very uh, unified effort to you know, kill somebody. It's it's uh, something that we need to catch a lot earlier and can. And it's, a, it's also a very controversial topic. Right. That if there is a there is a direct link to high levels of birth control estrogens mm -hmm. that are given for birth control Synthetics, over a long yes. period of time. Right. When it was originally de it was designed, birth control, especially and unfortunately, that was at the, the much higher levels years ago. Yeah was meant for a short period of time, not a lifetime period. Right. Right. And so we don't know the long-term effects of super physiological levels of these synthetic estrogens yes. and what that occurred for uh, for women over a period of time. So I think another risk factors, if you've been on birth control pills for longer than 10 years, and I've went to a number of lectures that they, they can plot this, uh, the, this Absolutely. risk factors over time, we're not talking that it causes it, it just increases the risk factors, okay? Yes. So if you've had, if you're one of those people that have had it for a long period of time, you have to change your estrogen metabolism because you probably have built up some of those metabolites right. in, in some of those. So I think it's it it's important to be on that estrogen 
metabolism. And I think you you uh, have a number of products that you people can take on a daily basis mm -hmm. to help with estrogen metabolism, right? Absolutely. Now, one of the big topics that I love dealing with often is synthetic estrogen, synthetic uh, progesterone. The two together, the synthetic progesterone added to synthetic estrogen increases your risk of breast cancer 800 times. Now, that was from the Women's Health Initiative, which was you know, erased uh, at one point and and uh, uh, taken uh, uh, taken back, but there that was a great uh, point that was made. And the problem is again, like you say, it is the metabolization of the estrone or the synthetic estrogen. It goes in, especially the orals, because it goes in the mouth and it goes through the liver and gets metabolized first. It has a couple of choices of me metabolic pathways to go down. There's one really good one and the other two are not so great. When you have that much synthetic estrogen in the body, combining it with synthetic progesterone, it goes down the b two bad pathways, becomes very inflammatory. And that is where you get the encouragement of cancer growth. Somebody like you say, who's been on uh, birth control pills and they won't, I know they won't study it like they did the Women's Health Initiative. You know, we, we won't study birth control pills because it's a million billion dollar industry. But for that to occur, we need to know that the synthetics are the issue here and the metabolization of them. The things that I use in clinic, I first of all, try to get women to look at their environment, all of the things that they're exposed to, the synthetic, uh, not just the synthetic estrogen, but things like the xenoestrogen or hormone sure. disruptors like BPA and a lot of things in our makeup and our candles and our house cleansers, shampoos, lotions, things like that. Also in plastic water bottles and, uh, you know, storing in plastic or microwaving in plastic and try to get women away from that. You can use DIM, D-I-M, or, um, you know, some other uh, uh, things like- It's a uh, capsule, it's a the, DIM twice a day. Right. Uh, it, instead of eating uh, 15 heads of broccoli <laughs> and, and 10 heads of cauliflower, you can take right. uh, two capsules twice a day. I think that'd be good. Yeah, well, and you know, your broccoli uh, sprouts and, and uh, That's uh, right. all of that are very good too. And, but our food doesn't contain the nutrition that it used to. So in order to get the sulforaphane, you know, from the broccoli and, and cauliflower and all that, we do have to eat. I think there was a, a study done that said you have to eat 12 cups of broccoli to equal the one cup that we used to have in the 70s. You know, we could eat one cup a day wow. and get all of we needed. Now we have to eat 12 cups a day. I wouldn't want to be in the same room with you if you did that. So <laughs> please don't. But, you know, given that we do, we have to take things like DIM. I also use natural progesterone, something that you guys make and supply my patients sure. when I give them natural slow release progesterone. So these are all very, very great ways of protecting yourself from developing cancers in general, but breast cancer, premenopausal breast cancer in particular, I do believe that. And I wanted just to comment on the sulforaphane. Yeah. Uh, did you know in 1992, when John Hopkins University discovered it mm -hmm. from natural medicine, from broccoli sprouts, right. the sulforaphane molecule was considered a drug by the FDA. Wow. It, and it was, so it is, has this significance as a, as an ingredient. So the FDA classified it as a drug, right. but it's very difficult to get sulforaphane into the body. Now, I don't understand why no further research was done on sulforaphane to use it as an anti-cancer drug. Right. I think it's because it was uh, something that was, there's no money in it. Absolutely. Sulforaphane can be brought into the body very simply mm -hmm. with a mimicking another enzyme that it can be absorbed into the cells. So we are, there's a number of products on the market yes. that have the bro broccoli seed extract that has that the body can absorb the active ingredient sulforaphane. Right. But today, sulforaphane is not common knowledge for every single cancer patient. Right. It's almost as a considered a health food 
gimmick. Right. And that's just really unfortunate. So look at, you know, sephirophane, uh, even in for its use in tumors in com combination with green tea extract, right. epic, epic uh, ECGC right. is, is so important. These, these combinations of natural medicine in addition to low chemo drugs. So this fusion of natural medicine with, with pharmaceuticals is so powerful. And I really encourage people to uh, go to our website, uh, to even even Dr. Mercola's got this nice website. But right. Life Extension Magazine is a great one of all the references, clinical, yes. peer-reviewed articles. Yes. Uh, I, the, the information is so prolific out there for uh, combination therapy that I just want people just not to be fearful of when they actually do have uh, get the diagnosis. Yes, absolutely. Well, we, as you know, we like to take the best of both worlds. There are some wonderful things from the contemporary side we know. There are some wonderful things from the holistic, natural side, so to speak, integrative side. You bring those things together and integrate them. And there are wonderful, wonderful combinations out there. But there is a block. There is a block on information. If it's not made, you know, making bukus by the, the industry, I won't won't well, name anybody specifically, but if it's not making a lot of money, you just don't really hear about it. But you are right. There are lots of great uh, products. So we're getting close to our two minute mark here. Ray, give me some information about how to find some of these products you've mentioned and to find you and more information on all of this. Well, it's always great to be on your show and we're here just to get the word out. Our website is pdlabsrx.com. That's pdlabsrx.com. Mm -hmm. You can call us at toll free at 888-909-0110. That's 888-909-0110. You can always just call us. Uh, we're happy to give you some links and give you some insight and some counseling. We also have a clinical services group that goes through in partnership with you uh, to give them some tips on how to change your lifestyle. So right. we have a lot of we're one stop shopping for all the different services. That is so, so give true. Us a call. And you guys still, you still answer your own phone after all these years. I mean, sometimes somebody else does. You've got a lot of great people who work with you and for you wow. uh, up there. Yeah. But yeah, sometimes you still answer your phone and it's wonderful. So I yeah, always appreciate we, everything. We, we, we enjoy talking to people yeah. because guess what? You never stop learning. That's right. Absolutely. And people are really, really looking for true and good uh, knowledge that uh, they can count on and you can guys do that. So all of that information will be on my website. So drpbetterlife.com. We are on San Antonio radio on AM 930, which I greatly appreciate the answer. And you can also then find us on every platform from YouTube to iTunes, Spotify, iHeartRadio, all of the uh, different uh, platforms for podcasts, drpbetterlife.com. And again, you can find Ray at there or at PD Labs rx.com we are going to take a short break come back and talk a little bit more about preventing cancer specifically breast cancer for october's breast cancer awareness month and we'll be right back hi this is ray solano with your healthy choices minute sponsored by prescription dispensing labs new research has concluded that implementing dietary changes could prevent gut inflammatory processes involved in some chronic diseases modulation of your gut microbes through diets enriched with vegetables, legumes, grains, nuts, and a higher intake of plants over animal foods has a potential to prevent intestinal inflammatory conditions at the core of many chronic diseases. In short, the foods we eat in our dietary patterns have a major influence on our immune system that can cause many conditions we are suffering from today. Solution, try our OptiMeal Shake. Our team has developed the best tasting, healthiest shake you've ever experienced to control blood sugar and to improve your gut. Gut. Start your day today with a healthy choice. Call us today at 888-909-0110 for a free sample of the OptiMeal Shake. 888-909-0110. Remember, you have a choice in healthcare.
Welcome back in, everybody. I am Dr. Marianne Pinkston here with Ray Solano from PD Labs up in Cedar Park, Texas. And we are talking Breast Cancer Awareness Month, which is hopefully Breast Cancer Prevention Month. And to you and me and Ray today, that means we are legitimately preventing. So, Ray, you were bringing up some interesting information there on the break. Tell me what you've got. You know, we start, it starts Halloween in a couple of weeks. I call it the Super Bowl of sugar because it starts in Halloween and then it yes. goes into Thanksgiving, which goes into Christmas and all the other holidays oh, and, yeah. then, and then into Valentine's Day. So yes. you have more sugar consumed in three months than in the entire year. So true. And unfortunately, everybody's going to gain about 10 pounds. So just mark your calendar. Everybody's going to gain 10 pounds That's because right. I call it the Super Bowl of sugar. You know, we're talking about breast cancer con uh, prevention. Yeah. This is a book that uh, it was published many years ago. I hope you can see it here. Yeah, for you, was, you on uh, YouTube, you can see it. For those off of YouTube, what, what book is this? This is Ravenous. It was by Sam Apple, but Otto Warburger. And Otto Warburger invented a, an effect back in, in 1930s yeah. in Nazi era Germany right. that understood that glucose gets absorbed by cancer cells. So it's the key nutrient, a very simple thing. And they were trying to prevent cancer in Germany back then. And they found it to be very effective. All the therapies to stop glucose absorption is was the first start of many, many different pharmaceuticals right. and nutraceuticals as well. Wow. So this has been around for uh, quite a number of years. Almost so 100 every time years now. You're gonna, so glucose, it has been documented. That's uh, the Warburg effect uh, that it absorbs into glucose cells. You, and you can use it for many diagnostics. So guess what? When you start looking for the sugar in, the, in your pink jelly beans, <laughs> think about something different, okay? Right. Do something else. Your pink maybe maybe some broccoli. I don't know. <laughs> Instead of the it may be pink sugar free jelly beans they should put I out don't, there. Or, I don't think I'd even <laughs> I don't go think there. that works I, either. I do, you know, you get your insulin levels going uh, by fake sugar. Right. You know, get those taste buds to uh, Maybe just some of those uh, uh, ch uh, chocolate nibs that are very bitter. How about that? That, that will work. You know, the, the thing about bringing that up sugar free too, because most, most people think, well, I'll just jump over to sugar free and right. that will, you know, fix the, this problem. That's absolutely not true. No. The artificial sweeteners, I feel, are 10 times more uh, addicting than regular sugar because some of them, it, like Splenda, can be, I think they said 600 times sweeter. And mm -hmm. And they can be very addicting, but they do raise insulin levels the same way that sugar does. And That's so right. you are not getting away with it moving over to sugar-free substances. They make you crave more carbohydrates and crave more sugars. I know this happens to me every once in a while when I, you know, I want a Coke again. It's just been a long time, that carbonation, sweet. And if I drink one, it takes me two weeks to get off of them then because I just wow. crave and I crave other things. I crave more chocolate i crave more right. sugar in general it's so it, you just have to it's stay a cascade from effect it is absolutely. You, you don't just start with one it just goes on so absolutely. it is probably the one of the most addictive substances because it goes on that triggers that same center in the brain yeah uh so sugar is not really the blood sugar but what it does to your brain right and you in your pleasure centers yes and then you throw in some fats in there and then you throw in some textures some, uh, some textures, gooey and, <laughs> and then all of a sudden you are just taking the cabinets off the wall and eating anything <laughs> That is so true. And, you know, it is the pleasure center that uh, you know that raises those dopamine levels that cause you to be addicted is the same as sugar will induce that same center as cocaine and heroin. That's, That's right. How addictive it's is scary. it as nicotine? Same thing. 
that is the most, those are the most addicting substances on earth. The sugar is way involved right with it. So it's crazy. Well, we are coming up on two minutes. It always goes so fast. I always enjoy talking with you so much. Always some great information. We covered a lot. We talked about a lot of great uh, laboratories that can catch this inflammatory battle going on in the body 10 years before you actually develop cancer. We can you know predict the possibilities of it. Uh, we talked about uh, artificial sweeteners and what that does. We talked about the Warburg effect. Uh, Breast Cancer Awareness Month is upon us. We want to prevent. We don't want to just screen and find early. We want to prevent. So where can people find more information about you and what you have to offer? Well, check out our website, pdlabsrx.com. That's pdlabsrx.com. Or give us a call, 888-909-0110. We got a lot of answers and we got lots of uh, time. No, I'm just kidding to answer all your questions. But, you know, we have clinical services group that can make appointments that we can really dial down to what we can do to improve your health. So Absolutely. give us a call. Yes, and please do. And so for those of you who want to go to my site and you can find Ray there and his team, uh, go to drpbetterlife.com and you can find the YouTube channel. You can find all the links to the podcasts and we are on Spotify, iTunes, iHeartRadio, all of them. And you can also find Ray and pdlabsrx.com as well as their phone number. And so please, drpbetterlife.com. Life.com. I would love to thank you, Ray, for coming on and talking well, about this very important pleasure. subject today. As always, it's great to see you and uh, we'll see you in another couple of weeks. And uh, thank you, everybody, for listening in. Have a great okay, week. Okay, take care. <laughs>